Around the world, wetlands, such as coastal marshes in Europe, the U.S., and China, and mangrove forests across more than 100 tropical countries provide coastal protection. For millennia, coastal fishers knew to push boats up in marshes and inside of mangroves to protect from storms. And in past decades, we seem to have forgotten those benefits. And we've seen these wetlands as swamps that needed to be drained and developed, and they've been decimated to build cities, ports, airports, and aquaculture farms. Yet wetlands, including marshes and mangroves, act as natural coastal defenses that protect people and property from flooding. Let me tell you how. Hello, I'm Mike Beck, Professor and AXA Chair in Coastal Resilience and Director of the Center for Coastal Climate Resilience at the University of California, Santa Cruz. Mangroves grow quickly in salt water at the edge of the coastal zone, where they form this front line of defense. Mangroves are also excellent at trapping sediments and building land. On average, mangroves can grow vertically by one to 10 millimeters per year in the land that they develop. Mangroves also reduce risks to more than 15 million people and prevent more than $65 billion in property damages every year. Mangroves do this by blocking storm surge and dampening waves and protecting people and structures at our shorelines. According to our estimates, the US, China, and Taiwan receive the greatest economic benefits from mangroves. Protection benefits to people are highest in key areas in the Indian Ocean and East Pacific, particularly in Vietnam, India, Bangladesh, and the Philippines. We generated maps summarizing the benefits that mangroves provide. They provide tens to hundreds of millions of dollars in flood protection benefits annually on coastlines around the world and we can show the hotspots where these benefits are most critical and we should act first to protect them, including in areas in Southeast Asia, as well as in the Caribbean. Even though we are still losing wetlands in many places, the good news is that it's slowed greatly, in part because we recognize the benefits and we also know that wetlands can recover from this damage and even adapt to changing climates. Mangroves are resilient, and we know how to restore them. Hundreds of thousands of acres have been replanted across the tropics, mainly in Southeast Asia, in countries such as Vietnam and the Philippines. Indeed, mangrove and wetland restoration can be a highly cost-effective strategy for risk reduction. Have you ever stood on a tropical coastline and watched huge waves break offshore? This is the power of reefs protecting you. And this happens not just around tropical reefs, but around rocky reefs on temperate coastlines from South Africa to Spain, Australia to America. And inside of bays, oyster reefs used to provide some of these same services to us too. But let me focus on coral reefs. Coral reefs are one of our planet's most biodiverse ecosystems. They provide many important benefits to coastal communities, including tourism, fisheries, and recreation. But they also provide critical coastal protection that has been widely overlooked. Reefs act just like submerged breakwaters. They break waves and drain away their energy offshore before it floods coastal properties and communities. In fact, reefs can break 97% of the energy that would otherwise reach coastlines. On shorelines with coral reefs, if we were to lose just that topmost meter of reefs, these natural breakwaters, the cost of storms would double. In the US, coral reefs are a natural flood barrier worth millions of dollars every year. An example of these million dollar reefs is in this image from Florida and we've shown, highlighted here in blue, where those reefs are providing those really significant benefits. We also show that around the world, if reefs were lost, the impacts would disproportionately affect 
some of our most socially vulnerable communities. Reefs are in trouble from development, overfishing, and climate change. But we can restore them. If we reduce the impacts to them, then they can even grow in the face of climate change. Almost every time I've ever talked to a coastal manager about restoring reefs for coastal defense, they always say, but I heard that reefs are dying anyway. And this is not true on a variety of levels. First, reefs can adapt to climate change. Reefs, like wetlands, can even grow in the face of climate change. And they can self-repair if they're damaged. Of course, that's something that artificial infrastructure cannot do. And finally, reefs are still in better shape than most other coastal habitats, such as wetlands or forests. And with a little love, we could help them out even more. Let me show you what I mean with this actual coral head that I collected in the Bahamas. It's dead, but when it was alive, it had polyps all over the surface filled with colorful zooxanthellae. When corals become stressed, for example, from warming and acidic water, these zooxanthellae flee and leave behind this white or bleached coral. This is a limestone skeleton, and it's why coral reefs and oyster reefs are actually like a natural limestone seawall. When we lose some of that seawall protection, then more wave energy passes over these reefs, leading to more flooding on shore. But we can also restore these reefs, building back these coral heads, increasing the height of the reef, and blocking the waves from hitting those shorelines. Reefs can also grow with climate change, and they can even keep up with sea level rise if we keep them healthy. This is the healing power of reefs.